ever get cold? You know, I'm standing here. I, I'm, in I'm, this. I'm really fighting. I'm really fighting, shivering right now. I just try to be cool. So you are cold. I, I am cold. I am cold. Cause, it, but, cause, you know, look at that. Yes. Compared to this, I look pretty weak from well, Atlanta, Georgia, coming here. Next time, next freezing. time, next time we get out, I'll get my coat out. And, and Would you please? I'll, I'll do that. Because that's not going to make that. me feel so bad. Okay. I can okay. Do that. Good. <laughs> I'm just hanging on for the ride. It's been a while since I was at the Arson Dog Training School in Maine with the guys. Now they've graduated, I'm here in St. Louis to find out how one of them, Greg Vespa, is getting on with his dog, Rocky. My name is Greg Vespa. I'm uh, with the Illinois State Fire Marshal's Office of uh, the Arson Division. I work out of uh, the Metro East area of Illinois, which is uh, East St. Louis. Whoa! Go ahead and shut it off. Yeah, I could, right? Grab seat. There's no better feeling than that. You see it all come together in an instant. It's been a long time since I last saw you, Greg. The last time I saw you, we were in sunny Alfred, Maine, where you were going through Austin Dog Training School. You're now certified. You're working with your dog, Rocky. I'm here now outside St. Louis. This is your patch. How have things been going since you brought Rocky back? Non-stop. Alrighty. You ready to go to work, Bobby? You ready to go to work? Let's go to work. Let's go to work. No, you can't eat the food yet. Come on, float. Come on. So you did some fire scenes during training, but how did he deal with it? Just you and him in that scene by yourselves? Just like we did in training. I mean, it, it, it just come, I think, second nature to us. It was no different than, than being out there at the fire scene with, with Mike and Paul standing in the corner. Tell us to hurry up, so... <laughs> Tell me about the realities of the job. The Reality. actual job <laughs> that you're doing. Busy. Is, is If I could say it in one word, it would be busy. Uh, down here uh, in the metro area, uh, between East St. Louis, Cahokia, Centerville, it's, a, it's an urban environment. Uh, it's very low income, um, and, and things burn a lot. You could have one street ran by one street gang, and uh, the next street over ran by another one, and then you get the little gang conflicts, or hey, you're selling drugs out of this house, and this is my area, and boom, you get a fire bomb through the window. And, and we see quite a bit of that, we see quite a bit of that. So I thought I saw a lot working the streets up in the center of the, of the state. <laughs> Down here, it's just, uh, it's tenfold easy. I'd love you to take me around, show me what you do on a regular basis. Well, let's do it. When you say that where we're going is the murder capital, of the United States. Per capita. Per East capita. Louis, yes. Yeah, the corruption down here is just horrible with, I mean, with all the, the political bodies. These lights don't even work. Yeah. Yeah, like There's if you look nothing. over here to the left, you can see where the fires come out and burnt in these areas. Yeah. Um, these big old buildings. I had a fire in this place right here. It was a nightclub. It's been closed ever since. So when you've investigated a fire scene, is it your job to dro go try find the person? Mm -hmm. So that that's part of it too. So it's not just you taking the dog in to find the evidence. You're now playing detective because you're now trying to find the person who did it. Right. Our our job encapsulates everything. To be three story building here, three story see building here. There. See that yeah. fire damage in there. You know. But it, it, once we get up here, I mean, this was a three story building here that you know that just went down to nothing. Uh, you know, it's a, a lot of areas aren't safe to take the dog into. Where we're going now is Washington Park. A lot of shootings, a lot of uh, robberies, a lot of drugs, uh, a lot of prostitution. And this scene on the left here, um, my partner actually investigated this house. Next house went up, and this is what it looked like when I got here. We actually found some good evidence uh, laying in the yards, uh, you know, containers. It came in as a vacant house fire. They got there, ran across the, you know, the victim inside the house once they were able to get in. And as you can tell, the whole roof's pretty much gone. I've had people sitting on the porch. 
and I talked to him and I said, how long have you been out here? Um, since about six o'clock. A fire would come in at seven o'clock, directly across the street, saw nothing. You know, East St. Louis, years and years ago, was, was, and I'm talking many years ago, was the hub. You know, it was shopping, it was a place to go, to hang out. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, and obviously over the years, it's just kind of, you know, dwindled down to what we're at today. It's only when you get up really close to a fire scene like this that you can comprehend how difficult it is, not just to put a fire like this out, but also to investigate it afterwards. Sometimes these structures are so dangerous, they can't take the dogs in. But even if they do take dogs in, they have to be extremely careful. And you can see just from what's happened after this fire, about how dangerous it will be to go into a building like this. What's the hope for an area like this? You know, there's a lot of talk. It's gonna take so much. God only knows when it's gonna happen. We are here at a recent fire scene that was uh, actually investigated by me. What we're going to do is, is kind of simulate what we would do in a normal scene uh, that I would be called out on. I'm just going to sneak in right now, uh, put some drops out. What are you going to try to do? Are ready? Easy, bub. Easy, easy, easy. easy. Oh, oh, what is that? What is that crazy stuff? What is that crazy stuff? Don't fight me. See. He hears to always keep moving. See. Yeah, see. See. This would be a loose walk through. Kind of let him acclimate and see the change of behavior. See. See. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, rock! Woohoo! How did that go? It went very well. Uh, we had three alerts. Uh, one in this front room and two in the, uh, what I would consider the kitchen. We searched the rest of, or sniffed the rest of the house and uh, uh, there was nothing. He didn't alert on anything in the rest of the house. The initial walkthrough is usually a loose walkthrough, but a lot of times with Rocky in particular, once he goes in the room and gets that initial command, his nose is down, which is what we want. So if in the middle of that loose walkthrough, he's alerting and alerts one or two times, usually about two, we'll just from there go into a strictly a regular sniff. Great. So now the next thing is you're going to go, you dig, you get the sample. Yeah. You bring it out, and then you bring him back again to have another alert right. on it? Right. We're going to do right under here, under the awning here, we're going to do a secondary sniff. It's just to bolster the first sniff uh, to give us a little bit more of a, okay, yeah, this is good. This is our blank can. Nothing in it whatsoever. There's always a blank can at the end so that he's just not trying to fool me. Dogs are pretty darn smart. They can do that. See? Oh, boy. See? Oh, boy. And we would do this the same way we do the inside. You would get a quick walk through sometimes they need it, and then a secondary. So, see, 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 good boy. Right, the good boy rock. See, see, good boy. I don't like him out. I don't like him out. I don't like him out. I don't like crazy rock. Crazy rock. Woohoo! I don't like him out. I don't like crazy rock. Good boy. Good boy. Oh boy, Bobby! I tell you what, three dogs, and every time I go through this and I get the alerts, it amazes me. It amazes they, me too. You know, it's just phenomenal that they're picking out something in that one smell that could be gasoline or could be a myriad of whatever other ignitable liquids that come out of that gasoline, and uh, and they're finding them after all of this. Yeah, that ain't gonna be good. No, you don't want to eat any more of that. You don't want to eat any more. Well done, Rocky. Well done. Take Rocky. Come on, Rocky, Rocky. Rocky. Take my boy.
Rock. What are you doing? Come here, knucklehead. <laughs> when are we gonna eat? When are we gonna eat? When are we gonna eat? Huh? <laughs> Are you going to take my hat off? I am. Sick! Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Rock. Hey, you go, boy. My cheerleading voice, oh, right? Oh, you've got Sick. a great cheerleading Sick. voice. Good oh, boy, Rock. There's one thing. You learn when you get your dog. You learn to work with your dog. You learn to do the job. Mm-hmm. But how is living with Rocky? This is a working dog. You've still got a high-drive working dog in your home, but... How do you and your family, your wife, make that transition of having that working high drive, high drive dog in your home? You know, having had the other dogs obviously helped a little bit. We kind of knew what we were getting into. You can only really compare it to having a two-year-old, three-year-old child. It's a little bit of an adjustment, but it's it, you know it's going good. It's just a matter of, of each of us getting to know each other, and it's it's a day by day thing. All done. And that's it. Good boy. I tell him I tell him I Great to see hello everybody. Have you been busy? Right after we went into service, we went a week with fire every single day. 